Welcome to the Lake District. I'm Peter Sidwell, I'm a chef and I live with my wife and daughter just outside Keswick. For seven years I've been cooking my unique style of food for locals and tourists alike. I use the great outdoors as my inspiration, making the most of the fantastic produce to be found in the area I call home. Welcome to my world, a world of mouth-watering food and breathtaking scenery. This series will give you a real taste of the Lake District, so grab your walking boots and a knife and fork and get ready for a Cumbrian journey of culinary discovery. I'm going to be cooking dishes as exciting and impressive as the Lake District itself. From scallops and samphire in tempura batter to potted shrimp risotto, wild boar burgers with grassmere gingerbread to venison stroganoff, I'll be taking the best Mother Nature has to offer and turning it into mouth-watering meals. Expect exciting, no-frills recipes that offer you a true taste of the lakes. I might call the Lake District home, but I have one thing in common with the millions of people who visit every year. I'm constantly surprised by just how beautiful it is. From wild fells to walled grazing land, glacial lakes to forested valleys, steeply pitched mountains to tumbling waterfalls. Most people don their walking boots and take to the fells, but that's not the only thing on offer. There are hundreds of local food producers to discover. Everywhere I turn there's something to feed my culinary imagination and inspire me to hit the kitchen. Which is where I'm heading now and fantastic local beef is on the menu. I want to make something that we can take fishing with us, so it needs to be portable, but it also needs to be really packed full of flavour. So I've cut the beef into really small chunks, so it'll just cook nice and gently. First of all, we need to get some flour and roll this beef in some flour, and that'll help us thicken the sauce as it cooks. So just some plain flour. And then we're going to season that with some salt and pepper because we want to start building the layers of flavour now. Key to really good cooking is good solid foundation of flavour. So start as you mean to go on. So take the beef and just roll it in some flour and then just pop it on the board. And then same again. You just want a nice even coating then just give it a little tap and get rid of the excess flour because you don't want it really sort of starchy. You just want enough to give it a nice sort of thickened sauce. I'm just going to turn the gas on this pan, let that get hot while I finish rolling this beef. So you can see this, this beef's got some little bits of fat in there and that's perfect because we're going to cook this really, really slowly overnight. So it needs that fat to sort of stop it from drying out and keep all the flavour in. Got this pan really, really hot now. So we want a little bit of oil in there. You always want to start with a really hot pan. So as soon as you put anything in there, you get that sizzle. So in with the beef. You don't want to overcrowd the pan, so do it in two batches if you want. So I've just brown this off on one side, just turn it over. You want to get a as much flavour in this as we can at every level of cooking. So this is the beginning, so maximum amount of flavour. So they're just colouring nicely. And once they've got some good colour on them, just lift the pan up and just pop it straight into the slow cooker. You'll see with my cooking, I'm not all fancy pants and messing about and all particular and dancing about. It's just all about getting it straight in the pan. Make it easy for yourself. Straight in with the remaining of the beef. To me, cooking's just all about flavour and getting out there and enjoying where you're going to eat it. So this, when we're on a boat fishing and we crack open those little flasks and you get that wonderful steam and aroma from it, you're just going to absolutely love this. And then some poor soul next to you in another boat fishing has got little limp sandwiches and you've got this awesome dish. So off with the gas and then 
into the slow cooker. So to go with that, I want to put in some vegetables. So we're going to go with a couple of onions and two or three carrots, should be fine. And then I want a really big hit of garlic because I want maximum flavour on this. This dish would work really well with shallots as well, like whole shallots, because they go really nice and sweet. Just give the carrots a quick wash. It should be fine. And then just chop the tops off. And then I don't want to cut these too small because obviously this is going to cook all day. So put them in sort of fairly decent sized chunks. Into the slow cooker as well. And then I want a real punch of garlic. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut the garlic straight through the middle. So you've got it like that and then just put that straight in. So a couple of spices now to add to this. I want to add some juniper which is really sort of it's got quite a pungent kind of smell to it. It's lovely with beef, really, really nice. When you get them like this, tiny little berries, you want to squash them to release all those oils and flavour. So just give them a little squash before you put them in. I'm going to put six in, that should be enough for here. Then I'm going to put one stick of cinnamon in there and just snap that in half. Don't break it up too small or you'll never find it at the end and you'll end up with somebody taking a great big mouthful of it. So to add to there, a couple more things now and then that'll be it. I'm going to add some good local beer. That's going to give it some real sort of character and just marry all those flavours up together. Then I want to add a couple of stock cubes. Now, I don't mind using stock cubes. Fresh stock is lovely, but let's be honest, who has the time to make it? So I've got two beef stock cubes in there and then just some chopped tomatoes to go in. I've got two tins in here, so I'm just going to add those just so it covers the dish. And that should be enough. And then a final sprinkling of salt and a good pinch of black pepper. And that's it. Just pop the lid on, turn it on medium and then leave it. And then we'll come back to it tomorrow and it'll all be ready. Peter sourced local beef from a traditional breed for his recipe, which nowadays can be easier said than done. Livestock farmers have farmed the fells and dales of Cumbria for thousands of years. Historically, virtually all hill farms kept some cattle. That has sadly been in decline since the 1970s. Yew Tree Farm is an exception. It's a traditional hill farm with a suckler herd. It sells beef produced from their herd of belted Galloway cows, an irresistible draw if you're a chef like Peter. The farm was named after a huge yew tree that was 700 years old when it was felled in 1896. The remains of the trunk are still lying in the field behind the house. Beatrix Potter bought the farm in 1930 from the Mark Coniston estate, as current tenant Caroline Watson explains. She was heavily involved for about 10 years looking after the place alongside the National Trust and it was during that time the tenants here um, they were struggling to meet the rent payments and she felt that she could help them with the increasing numbers of tourists to the area and provided furniture and curiosities right. and things and she helped them set up a tea room in the house and, and that actually did help the tenants survive at the okay. time. Okay, so a bit of diversification. It was early yeah. diversification. Yeah. It's also got a lot of um, wonderful historic features still left inside and um, Beatrix Potter actually did furnish it as well, um, one or two rooms which that, those furnishings are still in place now. So you, like me, have got a young family. What's it like living in a place like this? It's absolutely wonderful. Um, the kids get such a great upbringing. I mm. think farming is a, a wonderful way to bring up children anyway. It gives them a practical understanding of the land and mm. animals. And, um, and of course, they just have all this fresh air and, and you know, area to run around, which is wonderful. Yeah. They can let off steam. Yes, and, uh, just let them out the door. That's it, run. you know. Mm. And do you see yourself staying here as a family in this farm for a long time to come? I'd like to think so, yeah. yeah. I mean, there's always plans for the future in terms of developing the businesses, but I do think that we're very settled and happy here. It's so. going to be hard to move away yeah. from something like this. It'll take a bit to match it, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Caroline and husband John specialise in naturally rearing traditional breeds of animals. Their farming methods, coupled with, as they put it, a near fanatical attention to detail over processing means their meat is right up there in terms of taste. Mm. 
So John, tell me about these cows. I mean, it's such a stunning location where you keep them. Well, the Belty Galloways, as you can yeah. see, and the very old fashioned breed and they, they thrive on these poorer pastures. They'll eat the things that the uh, majority of cattle won't eat. They'll eat the rushes and sedges. Right. And they look really content, you know. Yeah, they're, they're very content and very fit and healthy. So tell me about the heritage meats uh, that you're involved in. We were a bit disillusioned uh, having quality animals going into the food chain, uh, being, not being recognised for their breed individuality. Mm. The Belty Galloway mm. is a lot stronger, richer flavour yeah. than the modern commercial And is breeds. that because it takes slightly longer to mature and grow and all those yeah. kind of things? There's, there's quite a few factors. One is the nature of the environment. Mm. The other is the fact that they are a smaller breed of animal mm. and, like you've correctly said, slow growing. Slow growing, that means good flavour, yeah? That's right, yes. It's a good old-fashioned meat. Yeah. One of the great things about being a chef in this part of the world is having producers like Caroline and John on your doorstep. When it comes to preparing great food, you have to start with great ingredients, and as you'll discover, there's no shortage of those around these parts. And talking of great ingredients, let's see how my beef stew is doing. Kitchen smells fantastic. This beef stew has been cooking overnight and it just, as soon as you walk into the kitchen, the smell just hits you, it just making my mouth water. I always look, try and leave this for at least eight hours if you're gonna cook it in a slow cooker. But if you're gonna do it in a conventional oven, I would do it for at least four, but please, if you're gonna do this, do it in a slow cooker, it works so well. So all I have to do now is just transfer this straight into the flasks. So carefully pour that in. It smells awesome, really, really good. If you fancy trying your hand at this or 